Maize, or corn as it is also known, was the food of many ancient civilizations. The Incas of Peru, the Mayas of Central America, the Aztecs of Mexico. In the pre-Columbian New World, it was the most important cultivated crop. After European explorers took this intriguing seed back to Spain, maize began a worldwide journey. Today, somewhere in the world, a maize crop matures every month of the year. Maize is the most widely grown cereal crop. In Africa, Asia, Latin America, and other parts of the world, hundreds of millions of people depend on maize for their daily food. For many, it is the only source of dietary protein. But this reliance on a single crop creates a tragic vulnerability because traditional maize varieties are very poor in protein quality. At high risk from malnutrition, even starvation, are young children in developing countries where maize is not only a main food staple, but also a weaning food for babies. For many millions of children, this means a dangerous lack of protein at a critical stage in their growth. The most common form of malnutrition is kwashiorkor. With kwashiorkor, the child has insufficient protein, insufficient amino acids. Their hair loses its color, its thickness. The skin changes. It becomes scaly and then peels. The blood supply no longer has enough protein to hold fluid within the vessels, so it leaks into surrounding tissue and edema sets in. These nine-month-old twins suffer from the other major type of malnutrition, marasmus. With marasmus, the child isn't getting enough protein or enough calories. Marasmus is caused basically by extreme food deprivation, and usually the mothers too are malnourished. The underlying problem is that maize is seriously deficient in lysine and tryptophan, two of the 22 amino acids which are the building blocks of all protein. Proteins are formed from long, twisted chains of these amino acids. If one of them is missing when needed, the process stops. The protein cannot be made. It is here that the efforts of this year's World Food Prize laureates are bringing about enormous change through their development of highly nutritious quality protein maize, also known as QPM. With QPM, the amino acid levels are nearly all higher and almost double in lysine and tryptophan. QPM has protein quality almost as good as skim milk. But this development didn't come easily. The Millennium World Food Prize laureates, Dr. Evangelina Viegas and Dr. Surinder K. Vassal, were born half a world apart. He in India, she in Mexico. Sam, as he is known to his friends, developed an early interest in maize and pursued his interest after receiving his PhD in genetics and plant breeding from the India Agricultural Research Institute in New Delhi. Ava credits a love of chemistry and biology, an ongoing interest in maize as a vitally important crop in Mexico and the support of her family and professors as key ingredients leading to her PhD in cereal chemistry and plant breeding from North Dakota State University. Their paths joined when they began their collaborative maize research in the early 1970s while they were working at the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, known as CIMIT, in Mexico. Eva was in charge of the lab, and Sam was newly assigned as the plant breeder to work on maize. In what can best be described as an uncanny display of scientific detective work, they accomplished what no other scientist had ever been able to achieve. How to breed critical amino acids into maize, significantly raising its nutritional value, but without sacrificing yield or other characteristics which made it appealing as a food. It was a long, arduous journey. Earlier efforts to add protein to maize had resulted in kernels that were soft and chalky in appearance, with low yields and unpalatable taste. But one day in the laboratory, our laureates discovered a possible key to overcoming these obstacles. Maybe, just maybe, it could be done. They then devoted themselves to exploring this new approach using conventional crossbreeding techniques with highly sensitive lab analyses. They tested up to 500 maize samples each week, 20 to 25,000 per year. And by the mid-1980s, almost two decades of persistence paid off. 
Success came when they finally produced maize with hard kernel characteristics, good taste, and higher quality levels of lysine and tryptophan. But just at this point of breakthrough achievement, support in the scientific community for the development of enhanced protein maize was lost, and their research funds were withdrawn. At the time, many nutritionists felt that protein could be added to the diets of the poor in other ways. QPM breeding material went back into storage. But doctors Vassal and Diegos refused to give up. Eventually, with support from former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and the Sasakawa 2000 Foundation, and with encouragement from the governmental leaders in Ghana and Mexico, field tests for QPM were initiated in both countries in the early 1990s. QPM was also spread in China through the work of Dr. Li Ching Xun. Early test data from Africa and Mexico was very encouraging, indicating better utilizable protein levels in diets of the poor, children recovering from malnutrition, and enhanced nutrition and growth in animals fed with QPM. In follow-up studies in Colombia and Peru, more malnourished children were restored to health on controlled diets using QPM as a protein source. As a result, interest in and the planting of QPM began to spread rapidly and by the turn of the century, QPM was being grown on over one million hectares throughout the world, and this figure is expected to triple by 2003. The QPM germplasm developed at CIMIT now contributes over one billion dollars annually to the economies of developing countries, and its potential impact in alleviating quashicor, marasmus, chronic malnutrition, and child mortality for hundreds of millions around the world is breathtaking. The results of Dr. Viegas and Dr. Vassel's work will continue to be felt in the years ahead, not only in terms of improvement of the human condition, but as an inspiration to others as well. Their accomplishments demonstrate the crucial importance of continued financial support to the international agricultural research centers around the world in order to facilitate similar breakthrough achievements by other dedicated scientists in the future. In addition, as the first woman ever named a laureate, Dr. Viegas will serve as a role model for young girls all over the world, inspiring them to stay in school and pursue science as a career. For their historic role in alleviating poverty, hunger, and child mortality, Dr. Evangelina Viegas and Dr. Surinder Vassal are truly deserving of being named the Millennium World Food Prize Laureates.